Actor Mark Ruffalo says that Disney Plus killed the MCU's mystique. It's true. And wonders what corrections could be made to restore. <laughs> this coming from the same guy who was all in on the What the fuck? That was the She-Hulk. <laughs> I'm Jasper Gonzo and this. <laughs> ah, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> you serious? So what's next? What's up, everyone? I'm Jazz Berganzo. What's next? Your Daily Dose. Hope you guys are feeling good today on this Saturday. Of course, this is the weekend edition, so uh, enjoy yourself. Well, this is the second video that I'm doing in regards to comics and, of course, Marvel. Marvel continues to dig, dig holes. They continue to bury themselves by checking off box after box after box and, of course, bowing at the altar of wokeism. Mark Ruffalo. Prior to getting himself involved in Marvel, damn good actor. Actually, actually a very good actor. Then, of course, once he got into Marvel, he got pigeonholed as the Hulk. And, of course, as they say, the rest is history. But, Mark Ruffalo has a history of leftism. So, it should be no surprise. But, he also has got a problem with the MCU. He's got a problem with Disney+. Plus. What? Are you biting the hand that feeds you? Mark Ruffalo is saying that Disney Plus has killed off the MCU's mystique and is wondering if any course correction can be made to get them back on track. Yeah, I know, Mark. First, fire everybody at Disney. And then you can talk. But until then, not a chance, bud. Not a chance. This, coming from Bounding in the Comics. Marvel star Mark Ruffalo says MCU's Disney Plus output killed its mystique, unsure what course corrections can be made to restore the franchise to, quote, what it was. What it was? Well, like I said in the beginning, you gotta start firing people. Just saying. And of course, there he is, Soy Hulk. As the old adage goes, even a broken clock is right twice a day. In my, uh, in echoing the opinion of many a fan, Hulk actor Mark Ruffalo has admitted that not only did the MCU turn Disney Plus lead into the loss of its overall mystique, but that he's unsure whether or not the House of Mouse is going to attempt any writing of the franchise's sinking ship and ever truly restore it to its former glory. Yeah, dude, you keep hoping. Yes, that's Hulk and Son. Wow. As previously reported, following a string of projects whose performances could be categorized as either absolute disasters or lukewarm CGI fests, let's go, I'm going to correct that, let's go with either clusterfuck or not so much. Uh, Doctor Strange, Multitude of Ant Madness, not so much. Thor, Love and Thunder, clusterfuck. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, not so much. Moon Knight, Miss Marvel, Secret Invasion, of course, She-Hulk, all clusterfuck. Well, She-Hulk, of course, was the ultimate until Echo came along. And, of course, now that is the reigning uh, queen, shall we say. February 23 saw the first admission of current Disney CEO Bob Iger uh, that Marvel Studios' overall quality had taken a significant plunge and as such outputs plans needed to undergo a significant revamping. Quote, We've had to be better curating at Disney, Pixar, and Marvel, and Star Wars of it all, said Iger during the earnings call. And, of course, reduce costs to everything we make. While we are extremely proud of what we are on the screen, Really, Bob? Are you that proud? It's gotten to a point where it's an extraordinary expensive. No. We want all the quality. We want all the quality of the screen, but we have to look at what it's going to cost us. Yeah, because you can't do a real good quality movie, you know, for, say, mm, $15 million, like something like Godzilla Minus One. Just saying. And, of course, more soy. Uh, that same month, Marvel Studios boss Kevin Feige confirmed to Entertainment Weekly that his team has already begun making works towards fulfilling Iger's desire for content creation. Quote, We want Marvel Studios and the MCU projects to really stand out and stand above, said the baseball cap producer. So people will see that we get further into Phase 5 and Phase 6, which of course is all woke. The pace at which we're putting out Disney Plus shows will change so they can each get a chance to shine. The lack of self-awareness. I love it. I love it. It's reflective. Not a problem from a personal perspective, but I think in our zeal to basically grow our content significantly to serve mostly our streaming offerings, we ended up taxing our people way beyond in terms of their time and their focus. Way beyond where they have been. You think? No. And while these supposed course corrections have yet to bear any fruit, 
His first likely showcase will be the effort likely to be seen in Daredevil Born Again, which of course, from what we're hearing, yeah, this may fall into the category. And the aforementioned Ruffalo is unsure whether they will actually benefit the MCU in any way, offering his thoughts on the current state of the MCU during a recent interview. The franchise's least favorite actor to portray the J-Giant opined, I think the expansion of streaming was really exciting, but the thing about Marvel movies is that you have to wait three years and then they created a mystique. These course corrections could be really positive. Then he opined on uh, Marvel Studios' ongoing creative restructuring. Will it be what it was? I don't know. The fact of the matter is, is that at the very end of that article, and it goes a little bit further, but you get the gist, that Mark Ruffalo is the least favorite. In my opinion, he's my least favorite. My and To me, um, Mr. Norton himself, who played the Incredible Hulk in 2008, and the, the best portrayal of Hulk I've ever seen in my lifetime. Because Mark Ruffalo's character was more comic book, uh, comic booky. Uh, 2008's Incredible Hulk was more of a serious nature. So uh, to me, I tended to, you know, to like that one better. But anyway, that's just me. But Ruffalo is kidding himself. He's absolutely kidding himself thinking that uh, the MCU will be course corrected. That Disney is going to change anything in their agenda. Because their agenda, their not-so-secret gay agenda, their not-so-secret pedo agenda towards the kids, that's their agenda. It's not about making quality content. It's not about spending the money. They're spending the money, but it's all wrong. And I mean tens of millions of dollars going wrong. When I just said a little while ago, you have a production company that made hmm, Godzilla Minus One for a mere $15 million dollars and has grossed over $200 million worldwide. That is how you make a quality movie. Why? Because you flesh out the characters. Godzilla doesn't play the major part, but he plays a part in it as well. But it's more about the people and their interactions with Godzilla than the actual movie. But uh, this is not about Godzilla. It's about um, you know Disney Marvel, Marvel Woke, and they will continue to do so. doesn't matter. Mark Ruffalo can come out tomorrow and say, you know what? The MCU's... And here's why it's fucked up. Because Disney fucked it up. He could do that. He can say that all day long. One, he'll never work in Disney again after that comment. Two, he'll never do it because he is of the woke. He bows at the altar. He kisses the ring. So he's not going to bite the hand that feeds him. But then again, uh, the lack of self-awareness. Ignorance is truly bliss in Mark Ruffalo's world. And with that being said, I'm Jazz Braganzo. This is what's next. Want to see more like this? Please leave a comment below. Like it, share it, subscribe to it, hit that notification bell so you guys never miss a thing. Continue to spread the word about the show. Help it continue to grow. And we'll see you next time. Peace.